It says, For what man? Verse 11, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? And he goes on to say, Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. He's teaching us that your carnal mind cannot understand it. But if you'll seek for, if you'll grab a hold of, the mind of Christ, hallelujah, you can understand it. Mm -hmm. You can understand it. Oh, they might look at you and say, you've lost your mind. And when they do say, hallelujah, 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 that's my goal. Mm -hmm. I want to lose my mind and take on the mind of Christ. Because my mind, I know where it will lead me. My mind will wind, will get me in, in hell is where I'll end up. Amen. My mind will lead to destruction. My ways will lead to destruction. But God's ways are the ways of life. Hallelujah. Let me skip some of this. Listen to what he says. Verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. I'm still in 1 Corinthians 2. The natural man, the carnal mind, cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. For there are foolishness unto him. See, the things of God are foolishness under your carnal mind. You will beat your head up against the wall till you fall over dead. If you try to understand God with your mind, your carnal mind. Amen. That's why when you look at Genesis, you don't understand how that in the beginning was God. Because your carnal mind has to see a beginning of everything. But your spiritual mind, oh, that mind of Christ... Hallelujah. Christ in you, the hope of glory. <laughs> Your spiritual mind, that, that mind of Christ can see how that could happen. And then, see, that's how faith works. Because your flesh cannot walk by faith. You're, the Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Your carnal mind cannot comprehend faith. Now listen to what he goes on to say here. He says that those things are foolishness unto him, talking about the carnal mind. Verse 15 says, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. The mind of Christ is how you understand the mind of God, the things of God. And in order to get that, you cannot continue the same way you've always continued. You can't be satisfied with nothing ever changing in your life. I know we don't like change, but we need to pray, God, change me. Change me. Change more than my church attendance. Change more than my tithe paying. Change more than my wardrobe. Get down inside of me and do an open heart surgery and implant the mind of Christ inside of me so that I'll walk different, so that I'll talk different, so that my desires will be different. Talking about having the mind of Christ this morning. How long have I been preaching, Brother Rod? Ten minutes? Thirty-two. The mind of Christ stands in sharp contrast to the wisdom of man. Read this whole chapter. That's verses 5 and 6. It teaches us these things. The mind of Christ involves the wisdom of God. Once hidden but now revealed. That's verse 7. The mind of Christ is given to believers through the Spirit of God. That's verses 10 through 12. The mind of Christ cannot be understood by those without the Spirit. That's verse 14. The mind of Christ gives believers discernment in spiritual matters. That's verse 15. We read some of that. The carnal mind, according to Romans 8 and 5, it says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Talking about the mind of the carnality, the carnal mind and the mind of Christ. Then he says, he takes it a step farther. Not only is your carnal mind, not only to be carnally minded is death, then he says, but your carnal mind is enmity against God. That's why you find the struggle so hard. You're trying to understand it with your carnal mind. And your carnal mind is an enemy with, with God. You know why? Because it doesn't understand faith. In order to believe God, you have, in order to believe in God, you must first believe that He is. And in order to do that, you must believe through the mind of Christ. In order to be able to receive the things of God, we must somehow get away from our old carnal way of thinking and say, God, I don't understand it. Oh, and I'll tell you where the answer's at today. It's in His Word. That's where all the answers are at. 
I don't understand it, but I believe your word. If you can get your faith and your belief in His Word, then there ain't a devil in hell that can convince you otherwise because you will just stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Well, I don't know if you need to stand. Maybe you stand with your toes on their head and look down and say, Devil, the Bible says that all things work together for my good, that I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ, that in the end I've already read the back of the book and I know who wins and I know you lose. Put your faith in God. Seek for a more intimate relationship with Him to be more spiritually minded than you are carnally minded. See, that's our problem. Most of the time we allow our carnal mind to rule everything we do. Our carnal, carnal minds, this, this mind decides whether we can afford to give, whether we feel like going, whether we can do this, whether we want to do this. That's usually what it comes down to is what we want to do. Amen? Amen. Huh. Somebody says I can do anything I want to do, but my or how is it? How is that? Somebody said uh, something about my wants been changed. I don't know. I got that all messed up. My desires been changed. Amen. When he said he'd give me the desires of my heart, I don't necessarily think he was talking about that Lincoln I've been lusting after, but he'll give me new desires. I won't desire the same things that I used to desire, Brother Sleese. I won't want the same things that I used to want but I want the things that God wants. I'll begin to have the mind of Christ. And this is what all believers are supposed to strive for, but we haven't been taught this. We get people saved or a confession of faith and sign them up on our books and then set them on our pews and say, you're okay. I'm okay. How you doing? Shake my hand, Brother Tyler. You're all right. We're okay. We'll see you next Sunday. Be sure to bring your checkbook. God bless you. No, we don't tell people there's more to this thing than just being... There's more to life than just being born. You have to grow up. Mm -hmm. There's more to your relationship with Jesus than just being born again. Mm -hmm. You have to grow up. Amen? <laughs> and in order to do that, you're going to have to learn some things. Paul said, I have learned in every state that I'm in to be content. Mm -hmm. right. He didn't say I feel it. <laughs> he didn't say that, you know, that I was born with this. He said I've learned it. Mm -hmm. We've got to learn some things. Mm -hmm. We've got to learn to be more spiritually minded than carnal minded. Amen? Oh, I like this. Now I've got to wrap up. I know. I'm trying to lead to something, but I guess we won't have to pick this up some other time. The carnal mind will lead you to Sodom. The carnal mind chooses to look upon Bathsheba and not turn away. The carnal mind cannot grasp the things of God. I'm trying to get us to a point where we can understand where the real battle takes place. Do you hear what I said? The Bible says we battle not against flesh and blood but against spiritual wickedness in high places. I can prove to you this morning out of the Word of God, I don't even have to use the Bible. I can prove it to you just by talking to you and your experience and the way your week has went <clears throat> to convince you where the real battle took place. It took place between your ears. The real battle goes on in your mind. And the devil knows this. The enemy knows this. You see when he said spiritual wickedness in high places? I know that above us in the heavenlies there's a spiritual warfare going on. I can see that in the Word. Someone said, well, you know, he's talking about evil leaders. And I can see that. But I can see that in the stature of man, the stature of man, you can get no higher than the mind because that's where the pinnacle is at. That is where your battle goes on. That is where when Paul said those things which I want to do, I don't. And the things which I want to do, when the things I want to do, I can't do things I don't want to do, I wind up doing. What was he talking about? The battle that went on in his mind. And if you don't think the enemy knows that the attack and the warfare is in your mind, you're crazy. Because he will attack you why do people get depressed? Because the devil attacks their mind. Where does fear come from? The attack of your mind. Why in the world has the devil unleashed such an attack of the occult and witchcraft through Hollywood, through movies, through television, through toys, through games, video games, through all of that, into our children? Because he knows if he can get their mind, he can get them. And what do we do? 
Like an ostrich, the church sticks her head in the sand and her rump in the air and gives the devil a big target and hides her face and says, everything's all right. Everything ain't all right. Amen. To be carnally minded is death. It is enmity with God. So I pray today that we can lose our mind. Amen. <laughs> the Bible says in Acts 17 and 6, and I'm closing, that these men have turned the world upside down, talking about the apostles. Why? Because they had lost their mind. What do you think they would have thought about Paul and Silas after they'd been beaten? They were sitting in jail at midnight and they heard them. Glory to God in the highest. They'd have thought they'd have lost their mind. They'd been right. They'd been right. They'd have lost their mind. Hallelujah. And took on the mind of Christ. Amen. My goodness. What causes Stephen to pray for his killers? He done lost his mind. <laughs> if they stood by, oh, and they did. They thought, man, he's crazy. He done lost his mind. Yeah, he lost his mind. Mm -hmm. Whew, hallelujah. You know, you probably wouldn't be here. <clears throat> My goodness. You probably wouldn't be here today if somebody hadn't lost their mind and prayed for you and sought God for your salvation. I called Mama last night because I wanted to get this right and I'll probably still mess it up. She told us a story more than once about how when she was a kid, they had to go over to Grandma Downs. And I'll probably get this wrong, but don't correct me, Mama. They don't know no difference. Hallelujah. I'll get, to, I'll get the meat of it right. They had to go over to Grandma Downs' house. <clears throat> I don't remember exactly why she said they had to go over there, but Mama said she's just a kid. And she heard Grandma Downs' sister, I guess that'd be Aunt Annie, Mama said. She heard her doing something. It's loud. And she asked Grandma there. She, she asked Granny. She said, what's she doing? And she says she's praying. Mama said she thought she's crazy. Mama done thought she lost her mind. And she had. Amen. She was praying. You know what? I asked Mama last night on the phone. I said, Mama, do you remember anybody else in our family that, you know, back from when you was a child and our ancestors? No, do you remember ever hearing anybody else pray like that? And she said, No. She said, We didn't even know what prayer was. And it got me to thinking, Sister Cindy. I might be here today. I might be saved today. My family that was brought to an old-fashioned altar and Mama was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and raised her children to know about Jesus might have happened because old Aunt Annie lost her mind. Hallelujah. And she took on the mind of Christ and she sought God for the salvation of her family. So what Mama thought was some crazy old woman. Oh, we can look back now. And see, we may be here today because of the prayers of that crazy old woman. Amen. That little granny that you thought had lost her mind. She had. <laughs> oh God, help us to lose our mind. Help us to have the mind of Christ. Help us to seek you while you may be found. My goodness, we need the church to lose their mind. And I don't mean in the way they've lost it today. Oh, we, they're messed up bad. Amen. We got preachers that go out to dead preachers' graves and try to get their anointing on them from a dead preacher who's been dead for 40 years. Try to get in touch with their spirit. Don't they know that that kind of conduct has been condemned by God? You find yourself in a graveyard sitting on a preacher's grave saying, get into your spirits you done crossed the line somewhere. You lost your mind in a bad way. The wrong way. But if you can get a hold of the mind of Christ, you'll find yourself wearing out your knees. Hallelujah. If you ain't able to get out on your knees, you'll just find yourself with the Pentecostal croup because you've been crying out to God to save your family. Thank God for some people that lost their mind. God, give us some more people that will lose their mind. Hallelujah. Next week, we're going to talk about the warfare that goes on the armor, and the all-out attack of the enemy on our mind. Amen? Hallelujah. To be carnally minded is death. It is enmity with God. But Paul said, let this mind that was in Christ Jesus be also in you. Get in the Word of God. There's still something to be said about study of the Word. There's still something to be said about prayer.
There's still something to be said about fasting. There's still something to be said about church attendance. There's still something to be said about seeking God while He may be found. Hallelujah. See, you ain't gonna get you ain't gonna get to be a spiritual firecracker just showing up on Sunday morning for an hour, sitting there like dead lice, and leaving the church saying, Well, I've done my duty. That's probably what it smells like to God, your duty. Think about that one. Because I, that kind of religious service probably stinks in the nostrils of God. Because it's not just a one hour a week relationship, church. That's right. Amen. Oh. This is an everyday thing. Amen. Brother Bill said that Jesus don't want just weekend visitation. He wants full custody. <laughs> Hallelujah. We'll have to carry on next week if we're alive and remain around to do it. Somebody else had anything this morning before we go?